if you had been deployed into the compound to take out bin Laden, could you tell me about it? No. I'm going to assume you were one of the guys. <laughs> okay. is called the heart and the fist the education of humanitarian and the making of a navy seal i'm eric Brightons, navy seal the seal team no, i'm a navy seal navy I'm a seal. Navy seal i am a navy seal no, i'm a navy seal team navy i was seal. in the navy seal navy, seal. navy seal. seal after the navy seal operation against osama bin laden and then the recent hostage rescue of jessica buchanan in somalia and a couple of other recent high profile operations one of the things that's happened is that navy seals have become really popular, popular. So it's so good. Uh, hard one wasn't for living better life. Resilience. Uh, these are um, you know, we we don't under the rules we don't sell books at, at Harvard, but we can urge you go and get this book. But his book called The Heart. This is a book about service on the front lines. I've been blessed to work with volunteers who work with street children in Bolivia and Navy SEALs who fought in Afghanistan. There's one thing that I learned in four tours of duty. It's four deployments overseas in the global war on terrorism. Four tours overseas in the global war on terrorism, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Miles, in Afghanistan, in Southeast Asia, in the Horn of Africa, and in Iraq. Four deployments in the global war on terrorism. I went to Afghanistan. To Southeast Asia. the Horn of Africa. And then also to Iraq. We're going to begin with Iraq this evening. Four American civilians were killed there today. They were attacked and killed in the city of Fallujah. And there is no other city in Iraq where Americans are quite so unpopular. Let us tell you in advance, some of these pictures are pretty repugnant, but they are the reality. As the commander of an Al-Qaeda targeting cell, my unit's mission was to capture, capture mid-deceased mid senior-level Al-Qaeda leaders in and, in and around the city of Fallujah, Iraq. On March 28, 2007, I was serving in Iraq as the commander of an Al-Qaeda targeting cell. in a very violent, difficult, terrible situation in Fallujah. Every time we left the compound, we'd get RPGs shot at us, snipers would shoot at us. In Fallujah, for every patrol, I'd take off my body armor, sit down with the team, and listen. What did they see? What did they hear? 
What can we do better? My unit was hit by a suicide truck bomb, and I was okay. I was taken to the hospital. I was able to return to duty, but a lot of my friends were hurt worse than I was. As soon as we got out on the eastern side of the barracks, I fell down to my hands. We made our way outside. I fell down to my hands. And because of the chlorine, my eyes were burning, my nose was burning, my throat my was burning. My eyes were burning, and my nose was burning, and my throat was burning. And I was just kind of coughing. Sure. And I was just kind of coughing and joking. And I looked down then, and I saw that I had blood all over my uniform. And then finally, uh, I pulled my hands away, and I realized it's not my blood. Some people deal with hardship and become heroic. And one of the things that I've tried to do in these letters to my friend is actually show them what you have to do in a really practical way to actually build resilience and be heroic. Tonight, he is a former Navy SEAL. He is the founder of The Mission Continues, also a best-selling author. His new book is called Resilience, Hard One Wisdom for Living a Better Life. Please welcome back to the program, Eric Greitens, sir. Uh, these are letters yes. that, that you, correspondence that you wrote with a fellow SEAL. Yes. That he drove his truck into his driveway. He got out, dropped to the ground because he thought there was a sniper watch. He got, got up and he ran into, the, into his house and he realized he had post-traumatic stress. Disorder. And then he started drinking. And on, on the, the weekend, weekend it was not a six-pack but a cooler full of beer. Then, then he, he called, called me after, after he'd been arrested. So this was a guy, Navy SEAL war hero, who's come home and now unemployed, unemployed alcoholic on disability who's looking at having his kids come to visit him in jail. I wrote him a letter about how you build resilience in your life. The book now is a series of edited letters from my friend Zach Walker. And that's why I'm here today to tell you that I'm running for governor of Missouri. I was a Navy SEAL, and we used to have guys who'd come into a Navy SEAL bar, and they'd be wearing the Navy SEAL t-shirt and the Navy SEAL hat. They'd read a couple of Navy SEAL books. They'd want to tell you all what it was like to really be a Navy SEAL. You can imagine how that went over. 